Hello and welcome to this week's review. And for this week's review, I'm looking at a small footprint moving magnet phono amplifier from Graham Slee. This one is called the Accession. And prices, well, you're looking for the actual phono amplifier itself, 900 and 36 pounds. Now for your 936 pounds, you get an external power supply, but that can be upgraded to the PSU1 Enigma power supply, and that will cost you an extra 200 pounds. Again, this is an external model, looks almost exactly the same, as the bundled power supply you get in the accession box. Now we are very quickly going to get techy here, so I think we need to take a closer look. Now, as you can tell by the price, this is a specialist moving magnet or, of course, moving iron phono amplifier. And as I say, a small footprint box spanning a grand total of 107 millimeters by 50 by 195 millimeters. Now, of course, it helps that the small power supply known as the PSU1 is a separate entity connected to the accession via a barrel plug at the rear of the accession's chassis and to the PS1 on that side via a DIN plug. A secondary mains lead runs from the PS1 to the wall via a figure of eight lead. Now I like the notion of a standard separate power supply because it hints at a low noise floor or at least a relatively low noise floor. If we start at the rear of the accession, impedance can be selected via dip switches rated at 100 PF, 220, 320 PF or zero. I used 100 PF during the review. There is a volume pot on the chassis and we'll get to that in a moment. So the accession can be used as a pre-amplifier. That means you can plug this particular unit directly to your power amplifiers bypassing your main preamp. Now unfortunately time was tight on this review so I could not review the preamp part, only the phono amplifier options, but I do hope to circle back in the near future and I'll give the preamp section a bit of a whiz. And when I do that, check out the pinned comments for this review and I'll add any thoughts down there. Now in the closer look section you will not see any internal shots. That's on purpose as it were because the company would rather you didn't see them. Well you know competition and all that and yes you can buy an accession and you can take out all the screws and you can have a good look inside but I think the company would rather not just give away this information all over the internet. So they want to keep their cards close to their chest I respect that, so there's no internal shots on this one. However, commenting on what goes on inside, I did note that the company prefers to tackle the electrical output of the cartridge before it does anything else. Hence, the first job of this phono amplifier is to stabilize the output from the cartridge. And the upshot of that is to produce a constant load to work with. Hopefully, because of that, improving the sound. We will see. Now the rear of the box, because we are still here, aren't we, features the usual inputs and outputs, plus a choice of selectable variable outputs for that pre-amplifier I mentioned earlier. Let's go around to the front now, and we will find toggle switches. And I do love a toggle switch. And that includes a very nice mono stereo switch, but also switches for EQs. Now, I will talk more about this in the sound quality section, but for now, you will find the classic RIAA or Recording Industry of America option. This is the nearest we've come to a current recording EQ standard. Any new vinyl you buy in the shops has been recorded 
using the RIAA curve. Now, before RIAA, which is really tough to say fast, was adopted, it took quite a long time to be universally adopted. And there were dozens of proprietary EQ curves around the industry, used by a host of record labels and pressing plants. Graham Slee has grouped many of these diverse curves into two groups, a British curve and an American EQ. Hence, if you play a non-standard EQ vinyl disc with this phono amp, you'll have a good approximation at least for the accompanying EQ curve of your choice. Like I say, we'll talk more about the individual EQs in the sound quality tests. And speaking of which, how does this box sound? Well, let's go to those sound quality tests and we'll find out. And welcome to the sound quality tests for the Gramsley Accession Moving Magnet Phono Amplifier. And I began the sound test with the original pressing of the self-titled Sutherland Brothers Band album, released in 1977 via CBS, and I chose the track Hallelujah. Now, this is not the drama-laden Leonard Cohen song covered by a wailing, and to me, Wholly irritating, Jeff Buckley. This is a rather different, and in my opinion, wholly superior animal. Waits patiently for the outrage in the comments section. Oh, back to the review. Hey. Now, this is a relatively simple song combining lead male vocal, vocal harmonies, close mic'd acoustic guitars. You get your drums, plus pushed to the rear of the mix, electrical rhythm guitar, bass, and possibly a wind instrument, although it could be a Mellotron, and then again, it could be a squeaky chair. I'm not sure, but the microphones picked it up anyway. So, what was my first impression of the Accession phone amplifier? Clean, very clean. The soundstage sounds like Mrs. Mop has spent several hours shining the entire area. Trim, that's another word which sprang into my head. Trim, there is absolutely, and I mean absolutely, no excess fat from this soundstage. The sense of focus is dominant from the accession. What this means is that detail does not hold any excess bloat. So bass is fast and it's full of impact. Mid-range detail, well, that dashes in, does what it needs to do, and then it dashes back out again. One of the highlights of this focus and clean delivery system was the insight around the treble, which revealed far more fragile cymbal taps than I'm used to from an awful lot of moving coil phone amplifiers of this price point. Never mind the moving magnet. Vocals, well, that was another highlight. Vocals offered a truly articulate delivery. I was hearing words within lyrics for the first time because, well, I could hear every single shiver from the man's vocal cords. It was at this point that I swapped over the power supply from the standard default PSU-1 to the PSU-1 Enigma. Now, on a practical level, I noticed an increase in volume. So, with this new unit in place, that is. So, I decreased the gain. In sound terms, with the new Enigma in place, how did the accession sound? Well, Wow, I think is what I really want to say. Just wow. What strikes me when hearing this new Accession Enigma combo is why the Enigma is only worth £200 and the Accession is almost a grand in cash terms. Because in some ways, when you listen to this combo, part of you thinks, shouldn't that be the other way around? I say this because the Enigma, when it's hooked up to the Accession, it makes the accession sound like a completely different phono amplifier. Sound quality is about five rungs higher up the ladder. The Enigma makes the accession sound positively expensive. This combo has a real high-end presentation with much more naturalistic output. So, what do I mean by that? Well, okay, the acoustic guitar plucks. They offer a gentle, 
easygoing precision. Detailed? Oh yes, but with no effort, no stress. Vocals are far more emotional now. Bass has an organic realism that gives you information, it gives you power, but there is a sense of confidence here. There's a composed, relaxed power. Sometimes, and you know, it's just an impression you get when you hear these things, sometimes budget Fender amplifiers, you get the feeling the drummer sounds like he's never seen a percussion instrument before in his life, and he's only now picking up a drumstick for the first time and giving the drums a random whack. With the accession and the enigma, on the other hand, the drummer sounds like he's done this before, if you see what I mean. You feel like you're in good hands. I changed music now, and I turned to experimental prog rock and the album Brownout by Morgan, the band Morgan. Now, that's led by one Morgan Fisher. It's the same Morgan Fisher who went on to join Mott the Hoople and then later on just play an old Mott. Now, this was a more high-energy outing than the Sutherland Brothers band. It was also more angular. Music here performed on its toes. Plenty of sudden changes were happening at a moment's notice. And the thing is, the accession and the enigma managed to keep pace with the pace. I never heard any blurring of the mids or dragging from the bass. The accession and the enigma, well, truly nimble and full of energy. Now, before we finish, let's report on the EQs, shall we? Well, the flat option, that's flat stroke CA. On its own, if you just listen to it on its own, it sounds horrendous. It sounds flabby and muffled. Bass was terribly muffled. There was no mid-range information. Treble had gone on holiday, and that is flat. But look, you don't select this particular EQ to listen to, generally, in a sort of relaxed manner. It's there as a tool, because flat stroke CA, and CA stands for constant amplitude, by the way, it's a specific option really for users to digitize acoustic recordings. So you're only hearing the record's own characteristics here. Using this option, if you're using the right hardware and the right software especially, you may be able to add your own EQ later on in software. So using this option, as I say, is a good tool. There's another option which Graham Sleep told me about. There are some 78s out there which were recorded with basically a flat EQ, no EQ to speak of. So if you have any of those, then this particular phono amplifier will be ideal for playback in that mode. Now bear in mind, I was playing vinyl using typical RIAA EQ curves. So because of that, maybe because of that, well, certainly because of that, when I selected the British EQ option, well, that sounded thinner, rather edgy. The mids lost a lot of information. Bass information was substandard as well. American EQ, well, that moved on the other side. It added a bit too much bass for my liking, slightly reducing the mid-range detail. But you've got to take all of those with a pinch of salt because, as I say, I'm using, or I was testing this system with vinyl that was not made for those EQs. It was made for RIAA. So take what I've said with a pinch of salt, but you sort of see where these EQs are moving, as it were. Bottom line though, it's really nice to have these EQ options at all and at the flick of a switch. So I'm happy that they're there and they are ideal for specialist listening. And that's basically the accession review Done. What I want to do now is to give you a few final thoughts, then I'll do some pros and cons, then I'll give you a rating. The problem with any budget moving magnet phono amplifier, and I emphasize budget, is that it only really has the ability, because of parts quality and the build budget, to give you essential information, the most important parts of any recording, you might say. But what it doesn't do is give you 
context. It doesn't give you any background information. It doesn't give you the filler that adds more personality to the sound. Budget moving magnet phone amplifiers are a bit like the old TV cop show Dragnet. They're only concerned with the facts, mom. With this higher end moving magnet unit, on the other hand, you are given more background story, more context, far more information in effect. A phone amplifier like this will better exploit your moving magnet or moving iron technology. It will make those particular cartridges really shine. That's how important phono amplifiers are. Done right, they enable the partner cartridge to work correctly. They allow it to work at its full potential because most people use moving magnet technology with lower cost phono amplifiers. And when they do that, they don't get the full appreciation of what moving magnet cartridges or moving iron cartridges can really do. So if you're a fan of moving magnet or moving iron cartridges, then you need the Graham Slee Accession because this specialist box will allow that cartridge to fly. But if you want to challenge the performance of your friend's high-flying moving coil setup, then grab an Accession and an Enigma power supply and watch his jaw drop. Pros and cons. And in the pro section, well, I loved the delicate treble. Some very nice cymbal taps during my particular sound tests, I have to say. Bass, very nice, very precise, very lean, powerful, very nimble indeed. Mid-range, similar, very focused, lovely precision from the mid-range. Lots and lots of information, and I loved that. And in practical terms, EQ options, I really appreciated the extra facilities on the EQ side, as I appreciated the mono switch, because I do love my mono recordings, and I have a fair few of those, personally, in my own collection. Now, if you followed this review to this conclusion, you'll understand, in that case, why I'm going to give the accession two ratings. Out of the box, as it comes, I'm going to give the accession an 8 out of 10 groovy award, and it's well deserved. But with the Enigma attached, with the accession and the upgraded power supply, the Enigma, I can only give that a deeply groovy 9 out of 10. Congratulations to Graham Slee. And that's your lot, Chuckle Bunnies. That's the end of the show. So I want to thank you for staying to the end of this particular video. If you can, if you can click on the like and subscribe buttons, it will just help this YouTube channel to move swiftly along the algorithm. In addition to that, if you want to click downstairs, I'll put a link to Graham Slee itself, the company. You can check out more about the accession and other products they do, of course. I will also put links further down to my own social media platforms, my website, my Facebook group, and my Patreon page. And if you want to watch Hi Fi News, etc., because it lives on Patreon now exclusively. So check out, well, there's several episodes over there now. And there's another one this week. And there's another one next week. And the week after that. So if you want to find out what's hot in terms of Hi Fi News and you want to experience some hints and tips, and there's some trivia and other goodies, check out my Patreon page. There's also other stuff over there too. Other exclusive videos, hi fi tour, buyers guides, all kinds of stuff. So that's where you will find all that gear. Anyway, I'll be back on Friday with the music alerts. If you want to see what I've got in the post, physical media wise, CDs, vinyl, maybe cassettes. Then that's the video to tell you about all that week's shenanigans. I'll be hopefully seeing you then. Good to have your company. Until then, folks. Bye-bye for now.